Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how a air handler and heat pump are wired with the low voltage wiring. So we have our thermostat located right here, and I just have these, obviously we don't have these hooked up uh, to power, to the high voltage power, but I just have these very close so that you can see how they get wired. So we have an 18-8 wire from here over to our heat pump here, and we have an 18-8 wire from here to our thermostat. And I'm gonna be explaining how it, how it makes, uh, the power makes its way to the control board in here and the sequencer down there. Here's our transformer where our 24 volt power is originating from. I'm also gonna be going over the defrost and the, the actual board itself and how it powers the contactor. So it's gonna be a long explanation, but I just want you to know how this system works. A lot of times it just looks like a big jumble of wires to people. And I just want you to have down cold what's actually happening here so that you can troubleshoot these systems quickly and effectively. First things first, our indoor air handler is the hub for all the wiring. And that's because we have our 24 volt transformer right here and that's where the power is starting at. And the thermostat just acts like a switch. And so it takes the, the red wire, the power wire from the, the transformer and it's basically just connecting it to any one of these wires over here. So the R is not going to connect it to the, the, the blue common because that would short the, the transformer. That would be the hot and the common touching and that would, that would end up breaking the transformer or as long as you have a 24 volt fuse on your red power wire, it would pop the fuse. In the case of air conditioning mode, so say you have your thermostat set at 70 degrees and say it was 72 in the building, what's going to happen is this switching mechanism right here, which is just your thermostat, is going to touch R to O, G, and Y. So in the case of just G, what's gonna happen is you're gonna send power from the, the G wire right here, which is green, to here, and that's gonna come over to the G terminal on this time delay board. So this is a time delay blower board. And so right here, you have this block right here, which is actually a relay at the bottom. And Anytime that you apply 24 volts to this control board, it's gonna have a time delay before the blower motor turns on. And anytime that, say, your thermostat um, shuts the, the power off to the, the G wire because the fan, you're, you're turning the fan off or you're turning air conditioning mode off, anytime it loses 24 volts at this control board right here, then it's going to still allow the blower motor to continue to run because this, this, uh, this relay is still gonna be energized because of this, this board right here. So it's only gonna be running for a period of time, maybe it's 30 seconds or something like that. But in this case, this board does not have a Y input. So it's only gonna have one blower speed because you're only applying one power wire for the, the blower motor. Other control boards, they might have a uh, terminal for the, for the yellow, which is Y as well. And that means it's gonna ramp up to a higher fan speed anytime Y is energized. But anyway, so your R touches O, G, and Y. In the case of R and Y, you're applying power through here. It's not going to that board. It's coming over to here, and then it's coming up to your, your defrost board right here. So you, this defrost board, you have your Y terminal. It's coming right into this defrost board, and, it, and basically between Y here and this Y, there's no relay, there's no nothing, it's just straight over to it. And then coming out of here, you have your power coming to your pressure switches. So you're gonna have multiple pressure switches inside of an outdoor heat pump. And these pressure switches, one may be low, one may be a high pressure switch, one may be a head pressure switch. And you may see another one over to the side that's not wired in series, and that may be a fan cycling switch, which is gonna turn the, uh, the fan off uh, depending on the, the, the head pressure, you know, that in case the indoor fan is shut off or something like that, maybe there's a problem with the capacitor, it's going to, to shut off this, this fan up top. But anyway, normally you're going to have anywhere from two to three pressure switches in series. So basically this wire is going to get connected to the pressure switch. It's going to come out of the pressure switch. It's going to go to the other one, then it's going to come out, and then it's going to end up getting coming back on this blue wire right here. So this blue wire is coming over and applying power to the contactor. So when it applies power to the contactor, you also have to have a, a C wire on the other side to complete the circuit. So this is your common, it comes up to the C terminal up here, which is connected to this C terminal, which is your, your black wire. And if you follow the black wire right here, you have your, 
your blue, which is your thermostat color code for common, comes back over to here, and this blue is connected to the common on your transformer. So it's a complete circuit. So you have your, your uh, R touching Y here, it gets connected here, your indoor air handler it comes out to the heat pump, goes into the defrost board, out of the defrost board, through your pressure switches to the contactor to apply 24 volt power to your contactor, and then you have your common wire completing the circuit. So it comes up to the C, goes back down through the black, to the blue, to the blue, and to the common on this transformer. That's what powers this contactor. Now, the other thing is I want you to, to be aware of is you have your this yellow wire right here. And if you follow that up, you're gonna see it's connected to T1 on this, on this board right here. Anytime you have your 24 volts at the T1, because these are connected right here, it's going to start counting the cumulative time in which the compressor is running. And that is for the defrost function for during heating mode. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. So right here is your DFT, that's a, that's a defrost temperature sensor, but we'll get to that uh, in a second here. Another thing is we just wanna make sure that you remember your R is touching O, it's connected right here, your orange wire right here, and then it comes out of your indoor air handler, it comes over to your heat pump, so it's connected to your orange wire here, so you're sending power to the O, if you see that right there, O is connected to this O right up top, and you are applying power to your reversing valve. What's really happening is there's a 24 volt coil and this slips right over this. You're applying 24 volts to the coil and then you have your path back, which is your common right here. And if you look on your defrost board, if you can make that out, there is a O and a C. Well, you have two orange wires like this going to, to your reversing valve. And so one is hot and one is common. And so you have your common connected here, which is connected to your common here, which happens to be a black wire, which is connected to your blue wire, which is connected to the blue wire at your indoor air handler and to that transformer. So that's what completes the circuit. Anytime you apply power to the solenoid for your reversing valve, it's gonna switch the flow of the refrigerant. And I have a whole other video describing what happens to a heat pump and the refrigerant flow and, and so how it works. So you can check that out down in the description section below. Likewise, I do have another video on the high voltage and what's happening on the inside of this indoor air handler down in the description section below. Now let's get to heating mode. And so if you set your thermostat, say at 71 degrees and say it's 70 in the house, what's gonna happen is R is going to be touching B, which you see that there's no wire on. So that's no problem at all. So it's gonna to touch R to B and then R to Y and then R to G. And so you're applying power over at your board through the, the G wire. So it's going to turn the blower motor on. Likewise, you're powering the compressor. You're, you're sending power to the Y, which is connected here, and it's connected here, and it's going up to your defrost board. Only this time, you're not powering your reversing valve because this, this one happens to be a Bryant carrier uh, pain unit, and they do not power the reversing valve during heating mode. They figure if it's, gonna, if it's gonna break, it'll break in heating mode, which maybe is more important depending on the location in which you're installing this at. But anyway, um, they're not powering the reversing valve during heating mode. So you only are sending power to your Y and it's going through your, your pressure switches and you're applying power to your contactor. You're just not sending any power to the reversing valve. So that's, that basically, that's just the main difference, that's it. Now, however, this time, what's happening is at your outdoor unit, the refrigerant is absorbing heat from the low temperature outside air. So say it's 40 degrees outside, the refrigerant running through this outdoor coil is gonna be below 32 degrees, which means that any humidity that you're sucking into the fins here is going to get attracted to these fins because it's lower than 32 degrees. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have frosting occurring on the fins and then you're gonna have ice. And what happens is you have to run defrost mode automatically with your heat pump. So how that occurs is you have a timer right here on the T1. Anytime you apply 24 volts to this defrost board on the T1, you're gonna be counting cumulative time. Then after the, the time is met, the time requirements met, your board is gonna be looking to see if your, your defrost temperature sensor is open or if it's closed, indicating that it may be below 30 degrees. 
So here's a uh, defrost temperature sensor and it opens on the temperature rise. So basically what's going to happen is it's not going to open up the, the, the uh, circuit until it gets up to about 80 degrees and then it's not going to close back down again until it gets down to 30 degrees. That's what this particular one it has right here. Uh, so this is an 80 minus 50. So it will open up at 80 and close back down at 30. So if this defrost board sees that this circuit is closed, and that means that the tube that's squished in here on, onto this uh, temperature sensor, it means that it's below 32 degrees. And so, and so this board sees, says, hey, we've met the time requirement. Our temperature is below 30. And so we're gonna need to go ahead and run defrost mode. Now, the, the cumulative time can be selected right here. I don't know if you can make that out or not, but basically it says, 30, 60, or 90 minutes, and that's your cumulative run time. So say this heat pump ran for 10 minutes, it shut off, ran for 10 minutes, shut off, ran for 10 minutes and shut off. That means that you've met the time requirement of 30 minutes, and then your defrost board is looking to see if this circuit is closed or not. So it's going to, what's going to happen here is the, the defrost board is going to shut the outdoor fan off. So it's going to, it's going to do that so that um, it can't have any um, heat absorption or heat rejection out the outdoor fins. But what's also going to happen is it's going to send power to the reversing valve. And when this outdoor heat pump sends power to the reversing valve, then that's going to basically turn it back into air conditioning mode. However, the outdoor fan is not going to run. So what's going to happen is these, the, the refrigerator in here is just going to heat up, heat up, heat up, and it's going to melt the, the ice or the frost that's accumul accumulated on the, the fins right here. At the same time, this defrost board is going to have an output, and the output is the W. So this is the W, which is the white wire right here. That is not an input wire to this defrost board. That is an output wire. So during defrost, you're going to um, have 24 volts. Uh, you're going to supply power over to here to the white wire, and from here, it's going to say go through. In this case, it's going to go through this cube. It's going to go to the sequencer. It's going to power the sequencer because now you'll have a 24 volt hot on this side and you have a common on this side and you have a uh, basically a uh, it's going to close the electrical circuit up on this top, the, this top switch right here and this switch right here. And that's going to apply power to your electric strip heating right here. Now, just so you know, this is not powered. <laughs> As I'm pointing to things in all of this, this heat pump is not powered with high voltage. This indoor air handler is not powered with high voltage. And if it were, you don't want to have your hands anywhere near the electric strip heaters. That's a, that draws a lot of power. You only want to be working on your 24 volt wires or maybe with the power off, you disconnect your high voltage wires so that you can then go for diagnosing your low voltage wires without uh, a high amperage load being drawn. So anyway, this sequencer is what's going to be controlling whether these heat strips turn on or turn off. So. During defrost mode, even though you are only supposed to be powering your outdoor heat pump, your, your electric strip heaters will turn on because now remember that your refrigerant circuit is back in air conditioning mode. So you don't want uh, low temperature air being blown on the occupants of the building. So that's why your electric strip heaters are running just for the defrost time. Once the, the DFT right here opens back up and your defrost is done, you're going to turn back into heating mode again. And so your output 24 volts in the W is going to stop. So you're no longer sending power to your sequencer. And then your fan up top here is going to go ahead and turn back on and your reversing valve is going to not be powered anymore. So right here, it's not going to apply 24 volts to the reversing valve. So it's just going to be in standard heating mode again. Remember that with this particular setup, anytime that you don't power the reversing valve, this one's going to be in heating mode. If you do power the reversing valve, it's going to be in air conditioning mode and it's going to be moving a slide on the inside of here. It's going to connect from here to here or it's going to connect from here to here. When these two connect, this and this connects. When these tubes connect, this and this tube connects. So you can check out a video in the description section below on that. So you know what we're talking about when we talk about electric resistance heat. This is what it looks like on the inside of the air handler. So this just straight electric resistance and air blows through this and across it. And that's what the, the air absorbs the heat coming off of this electric resistance strip heater and applies the heat into the building. Now let's talk about if the thermostat 
is set for say 74 degrees, but it's only 70 in the house. Well, in this case, what's gonna happen is your R wire is going to touch the, the G, the Y, and the AUX. And because we have AUX and E jumper and we just have our one wire in here, what it's gonna do is it's going to turn on the, the electric resistance as well as the heat pump uh, itself. So it's gonna have both running at the same time. So in this case, when you have R touching the, the E, then you're applying power over to here through this connector and over to your sequencer. And in this case, your sequencer is what is powering or allowing power to your electric resistance strip heaters. And so you know what all these extra wires are and things like here. This is a high temperature a limit switch. So this is a safety device. And this is a thermal fuse in case this fails, this will open up permanently but this has an auto reset function. So these two are just safeties right here. And so that's the only difference when, say your, your thermostat's calling for heat and you have a, a large temperature swing. Say you have this thermostat set at 74 and it's only 70 in the building, and it's just not keeping up with the, the uh, heat loss of the building. That's why it's turning on the electric strip heaters as well as having this heat pump running because this heat pump by itself cannot keep up. Everything else would be the same as if you were just running your heat pump by itself without the electric strip heater. So you still have your power being supplied to your, your G wire at your control board here. You still have power being sent to your, to your Y wire here. You know, this outdoor heat pump may still need to run in defrost after a time requirement if it's running that long. So everything's gonna be basically the same. Remember that your O is not being powered because we are in heating mode, so. So that's that. Now, say you have your thermostat and instead of having it set on heat, you pushed it over to emergency heat. Well, what's gonna happen is you're going to have your R wire touch G and your R wire touch E. So it's going to allow the fan to turn on because you're applying power to the control board on the G terminal over here. And then you also have power for your, for your white wire, which is right here and it comes through this cube and it goes over to your sequencer once again. So this is a pan heater on the bottom of the sequencer. And that pan heater is gonna push up or down on rods. It's gonna allow the rods to open or close the switches here and here. Now this, this circuit right here from, here from here to here and from here to here is normally open. So these two are not normally connected and these two are not normally connected. And if you wanna learn about sequencers, I have a video down in the description section below. We actually take apart the sequencer so you can see the inner parts of how this works. But anyway, when you power the pan heater on the bottom, it's going to close this switch and close this switch, and it's going to allow your strip heaters to turn on. Then you're gonna have your air blowing by the strip heaters, and that's gonna provide the heat in the building, so your heat pump is not being turned on at all anytime that you have your emergency heat on. It's specifically just the electric strip heaters. So I hope this explanation helped kind of break it down a little bit. I know it still looks like a jumbled mess as far as the wires itself. And you can read the wiring diagram. I would uh, especially say to study the wiring diagram on the, the heat pump so that you can see the connection diagram in order to locate the, the parts and to locate the color wires and then look at the schematic diagram for how the system works. So you know we have a bunch of resources over at our website. We have HVAC calculators, we have thermostat wiring. So we have 10 different thermostat wiring diagrams for different types of systems. So you can check those out in the resources section. We also have articles. So we have full length articles with a lot of different custom pictures we have. We've got quick tips. We've got quizzes to test your knowledge. And we also have our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning paperback. We also have an ebook there on the website that's available. And then we also have a thousand question workbook to, and that's there to test your knowledge. And it comes with a uh, answer key so that you can check your own answers. We also have polystyrene quick reference cards. So those are all available and they're also available in combo sets. And we also have the ebook available over at Google Play. All of our physical products, the paperback, the workbook, the cards, those are all available over on amazon.com. So make sure to check them out and hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at EC Service Tech Channel.